Hey guys, so today, on the basis of how well my last GCSE revision tips video went, you guys seem to love that, I thought I would do another one. So today we're going to be focusing on one particular area and that is notes. Briefly, if this is your first time here, hi, I'm new. Um, I did mention all of this in the first video I did, which was like a general overview of how to get an A star in your GCSEs, but I am currently in year 13. I'm doing chemistry, biology and geography for A level. For GCSE, I did RS, Italian, drama and geography as my like extra ones, the non-compulsory ones. I got nine A stars and one A. So now that boring stuff is over, we can get on with what I'm actually going to be talking about in this video. And as I did before, I'll be putting timestamps in the description. You can just skip along to whatever bit interests you most. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is why write notes, the point of writing notes. Uh, then I'm going to be going on to how to actually write good notes and organise your notes well, the physical note taking part, then some subject specific stuff, and then some overall final thoughts that might be useful for you to know. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is basically why write notes? What is the point? Why everyone gets so excited about them? I feel like they are the thing that people talk about most when you're talking about doing revision. Everyone's like, have you done your notes? Have you done your notes? Have you finished your notes? Why? Why is there such a buzz? Instead of having to trawl through your folder, you have them all in one place. And that is really important to remember that the main point of notes is that they are all the information you've done throughout the year in one place. Now, with that being said, it is so, so important that notes don't make up the whole of your revision and that actually they're just something that maybe you do to begin with in the lead up to your revision or at the very start of your revision and then you go on to past papers, you go on to looking at questions, trying to work out what you might need to know in order to get marks, that kind of thing. So the main reason that we want to write notes is so that, number one, it goes into your head as you're writing writing it and number two you have somewhere to go to when you don't understand something later on in your revision. So my biggest point to take from this before we even get on to talking about actually physically writing your notes is if you can get a head start on yourself. I think the major difference between the marks I got last year and the marks I got in my mocks, which was quite considerable, um, was probably that I was more prepared for my mocks. I had already started doing tiny tiny bits, I'm not talking like I'd written all my notes, I'm talking like basically if I had five topics to do that I knew I'd learnt in year 13, I'd already written notes on one and a half of those, two of those. So when I got to revising for my mocks, I didn't have as many to write. It's a weight off your shoulders, number one, less stress, better revision, and also it's just less to do, it gives you much more time for practice papers and that kind of thing. These notes are for you, so write them however you want them. Don't necessarily listen to what I'm saying, this is how I write my notes, and if you don't like it, totally do whatever's been working for you. Maybe you'll take one thing from this and that'd be good. So, the first thing that is very important to know and to stop you getting frazzled, especially uh, at A-level, if anyone is watching for A-level tips, is there's so much content, you need to really know what you have to know. <laughs> So either have the specification and write down all the things that you need to know, you know, broad topics of what you need to know, or take the textbook and take the chapter names of the textbook, write them down. I've made a spreadsheet on Excel, I'm that person. I wrote myself a little spreadsheet, I have coloured boxes, if it's done it's black, if it's not done it's red, if it's kind of done it's grey. So now I can look at my spreadsheet and I can go, right, before my mocks I managed to do these number of notes, in Easter I have to do these notes and once that's done, practice papers. So once you know actually what it is you have to write your notes on, it'll be so much easier to sit down and do it. If you haven't written that spreadsheet and you're like, do I have to do notes on this? Oh, I kind of did half notes on this before. That's confusing. Work it out. No, oh, I did half of this chapter and I never finished it. I need to finish it. And once you've got that sorted, everything will be much easier. So actually writing your notes. I don't like typed notes, I know lots of people do, but I can't learn from them. I find them really, really difficult to like read off of, I find my own writing much better, so that's what I do. But if you do like typed notes, there are loads of websites, um, Quizlet is one, I'll link some below, and they can basically make your own flashcards, mind maps, that kind of thing on there online, which is great. So I don't know if this is going to be useful for you if you're doing GCSEs, this is just how I revise for my science A-levels, but I think you can probably take something from it. You need to be writing out your condensed version of the textbook, 
with the notes that you've got from class. So if you're reading along and you're like, cool, okay, this is what happens when this happens, or this was when this person came into power, and then in your notes you have a little side bit that you've written saying, mention that they had a brother. This is me, I don't do history, but like imagine this is kind of an example for you. Then you'd write that in your notes as well. And you're basically writing from whatever your main thing is. So for me, for geography, I don't have a textbook. We don't use the textbook. We just use our notes. So I'm writing from that. But then I have some like little snippets of articles that I've looked up separately myself. And then I'll slot those in to my notes. So whatever it is, you take your main thing and whatever it is that's like, you know, extra to that, you write that down and then you put in your snippets and you end up with like the perfect bundle of notes. I hope that made sense. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you now some of my GCSE notes and then also some of my A-level notes. So this is what most of my notes are in for GCSE. I am going to show you an example of my physics notes that I wrote out because I basically wrote out the textbook again. So as you can see, can you see? These are my notes. Nice underlinings, nice colours, things that are important in special boxes, little diagrams, you know, however you want to do it, you do your way. But I really want to recommend a book like this. Obviously you have to not lose it because then that becomes very stressful, but having a book like this with, I don't know, for geography or your case studies or for English or your poems written out and annotated amazing or all the context of it. I think I have somewhere in here I wrote all the like contexts of my poems so like background information that would be useful to know who wrote it why they wrote it when their wife died that kind of thing. For A level I have folders like this and I have sheets of paper now that is mainly because I have been writing these throughout the year and if I don't have a specific book with me it becomes a pain to write notes because you have to then slot it into the book so I've just been writing them on bits of paper and putting them together in folders like this. So for example, these are notes on the very first chapter of the year 13 chemistry textbook. So this is what they look like. Obviously very similar to my GCSE notes. I've got diagrams. I hope you can see because it's double sided. There you go. I've got lots of different um, definitions and things. They're all together. They're all in a little pack with a big old title at the top. I can pull out this pack of paper. I might even staple them together. That's a good idea. I can flick through and it's a whole topic in my hands. Once you've kind of got your understanding of the topic, there might be like one specific bit you don't really get. That tends to happen with me. Like I'll understand a chunk of it, but not one little bit. You can just take out that piece of paper and then just learn that. If you're on a train journey, you just take one piece of paper with you, not a whole book. So that's what I found most useful, but obviously try it out. Like I said, in my other video mocks is for trying things out so whatever you can do to try out stuff in your mocks and then see how it works for you that's good so just a few little subject specific things the way that I did it that might be useful to you number one in geography I made mind maps of my facts so I'd have a page in that little textbook I'd write the title in the middle so like um, impacts of like flooding and then I'd write all the impacts of flooding round. You don't need to know that many. They definitely would all fit on a little page like that. So nice and easy. You're just flicking through and you've got all of them in one place. I think that's super useful. And that's how I did my geography. For physics, like I said, I had basically a mini version of the textbook in that book. So that was the most useful thing for me. And I think for most sciences that would work just to you know, draw your little diagrams, write some explanations, that kind of thing, all in one place. Handy. For English, I would highly recommend writing out the quotes that you might want to learn in terms of like being synoptic with the book you're doing. I think that's what you have to do. So like if you get a certain passage or if you don't get a passage, I don't know what you do and don't get. But if you're writing about stuff and you have to remember quotes, having a little page where you've written all your quotes out is like your port of call for going to looking at those quotes. Or if you've written all your poems out and you've got all your little annotations, or like I said, the context before, that was super helpful. Maths, I made flashcards. I made flashcards with all the rules on them so like the indices stuff little diagrams how to go through certain types of questions like the longer ones all the like Pythagoras I don't know I don't do maths anymore but like the different little maths things I feel like you have to know lots of little rules flashcards was definitely the best way to do that flashcards also work very well for vocab GCSE languages vocab just learn lots of like obscure vocab you will find a way to use it they will be impressed 
So overall, I hope you got some specific little tips, just ways I organise my notes, ways I revise specifically for certain exams, but also the importance of organisation and like being prepared to write notes, knowing what you need to do, doing your notes, and then learning them, doing past papers, getting your friends to test you, talking to people about them, trying to explain things. So I used to do that a lot with physics when I didn't understand. I'd try and explain something to someone and they'd have it in front of them and they'd be like, oh, you missed out this point, you missed out this point. Having good notes also means they can look at your notes and understand what's going on, even if they've never studied it before. Notes are a very important basis, but they aren't everything. I actually think past papers um, are definitely more important, especially especially for maths, sciences, uh, geography, history, things that have quite like picky titles and sometimes you have to sit and think actually what they're asking. It's really important to practice doing that. But with that being said, you need your knowledge in order to do that. So I would definitely say notes first and learning everything and then doing that. Just don't get bogged down and try and be as efficient with your time as possible by planning it out in advance. I really hope this helped you and if you have any questions I'm going to be doing a Q&A at some point on revision just like specific questions that people want to know so leave me a comment, tweet me, Instagram DM me and I will be doing that very soon. So thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in another video. Bye!